What's up scavengers, hope you're all having a brilliant day. In this video, we'll continue onwards from the previous part. If you have not watched that part yet, go do it to see how this epic setup was built. This video is gonna be about how the ants moved inside, as well as some other edits I made to my Messer Barbarus Colonies setup. To kick things off, let's take a look at the colony, before we connect them to the new setup. Uh, yeah, pretty barren and shitty looking. I am not gonna lie, moving them into this big of a white on nest was probably a bit naive, since they clearly didn't need this huge of an upgrade at the time. This is very noticeable since they use much of the nest as trash stations, something very unpleasant to look at, but it is also bad since it gives mold an opportunity to grow inside the nest, which you obviously don't want. Now you might be asking, well, they clearly don't fill up this white nest, why on earth would you add another dirt setup for them too? Well, if you did watch my previous video, part 1, where I built this new setup, you would know the answer to that. So if you want a better explanation on why, go watch that video. A quick summary of the many pros of this new dirt setup, however, is that it will enable the ants to have a more constant humidity source, as well as enabling them to leave trash close by, not having to walk all the way to the outworld. Plus, I love natural behaviors, so giving them digging medium was really exciting. A flaw in their previous setup was their 10 meter tube spanning from their outworld to their nest. Which is why you will see me take it apart for shortening here in the background whilst I explain why this is needed. When thinking about making the setup, I thought they would be much more active in the tubing than what they were. Since they walk even longer distances in the wild in search of food. But what I missed was that in the wild they also have satellite nests, which I did fail to offer. The satellite nests are used as pit stops for the ants to collect food as well as distribute their brood if one of the nests were to be attacked. Since I didn't offer a satellite nest in the middle of the very long tube, they kinda made their own. And that's why you don't see many of them in the white tongue setup. Almost 70% of the colony or so were at the time nesting inside the tubing, as you can see here. This was very frustrating when I had made such a nice nest for them. So that's why I figured to shorten the tube to only about 3 meters or so, making it easier for them to move the food from the outworld to the nest. Another reason to make the tubing shorter was because the ants did not have access to an outworld right beside their nest, as they do in the wild, forcing them to either people people in the nest, or what they also did as you can see here, have communal toilets uh, on random spots along the tubing. This was of course another flaw in the setup and really disgusting to look at, which was going to be fixed by adding a new dirt setup, since they could do it in there, much closer to the nest, as well as shortening the tubing. As you have seen here in the background, I did all this by disconnecting the tubing from the ventilation points, which was made from tube connectors with drilled holes and glued meshing. And then I reapplied all the tube holders and inserted the now clean tubing. Pretty simple and straightforward. Now it's time to actually connect the ants to their new dirt formicarium. As you can see, I already had a pre-drilled hole in their white nest for this exact occasion. A tip when fitting tubing in nests like this is to use thin cotton pieces and squeeze them between the tubing and the nest. This creates a much more secure hold on the tubing. The next thing to do was to connect it all up with a cable gland that I had mounted on the dirt setup. As you can see, the entrance to their dirt setup was well below ground level. This is because I wanted to achieve a nature mimicking setup for them making all their nest parts under the main ground level of the new setup. Now all that was left to do was to wait. And wait some more. But it wasn't that long until there were actually some action inside the tube. They had started to dig. Things was going smoothly, and the ants was hard at work, moving all the dirt, so I felt like leaving them in peace for the day. The next day in the morning I came back, and they had broken through to the surface, and were now out and about in the outworld. They had actually started to dig down in the far end, making tunnels against the glass. This was super exciting, since I've never before had the chance of owning a setup like this. It was truly mesmerizing seeing them at work. It's pretty cool observing their tactics, since all the dirt they dig up has to go somewhere, carried out from the tunnel one grain at a time. Here we can see how two of the worker casts took the same job digging in the far end of the tunnel. Teamwork makes the dream work. It's honestly pretty crazy how strong ants are. Just look at this girl, holding a rock the size of her entire body, climbing straight upwards on the glass. They're so strong. They have also dug down straight after the entrance, as you can see here. This spot was very hard to film, so these skewed angles was all I could get. As you can see here, they chose to make the exit to the outworld just above the entrance of the white tongue nest. And here you can see how one of the major workers was standing around, guarding the entrance. A really cool behavior to see. 
So I came back the next day and wow, they had come so far, probably not taking any breaks at all from the digging. Here's some more time lapses of the workers going at it, digging the tunnels. This spot in the corner was pretty interesting. They chose to make this as a sort of meeting point for all of the tunnels. Pretty dope. Following them on their ascent, we can see how the tunnels branch off even more. And a bit further up, they chose to make two exit tunnels. I really wonder how they decide to make these tunnels. Like, why have two exits when one should suffice? Oh, I love time lapses of them digging. It's crazy how much traffic these tunnels get. If we take a look at the right corner tunnel joint, and take the largest tunnel to the left, we can see how it leads all the way against the bottom to the far other end of the tank. And over there, they had already made a super deep chamber along the floor. So cool how they managed to get the dirt not to fall down on them. Seems a bit risky in my opinion, but well, they are the master architects. I found this major carrying a big rock all on her own. I've said it before and I will say it again, looking at them work like this is truly mesmerizing. So, how does this setup look today, a few months after? Well, as of me writing this, this is how it looks like. The first thing that greets you are the wonderful poop lines that Messer likes to make. So, before we take a closer look, let's fix that. As you may know from following on my Instagram, I made this dirt setup quite a long time ago. So, actually a lot has happened with their chambers. The black paper I have here, as you can see, to keep their chambers in the dark was, believe it or not, once upon a time, covering all the dirt they had in the setup perfectly. All the dirt you see above the black paper has in other words been raised above ground level from their many excavations. Pretty cool to think about. This colony has gotten so much brood from them moving inside of this new dirt setup. Pretty crazy to see how much they actually have in here and that all those eggs you see there were all laid by the same queen. Insane. Just look at all this brood. I managed to get some really cool close-up shots. I hope you enjoy. It's pretty interesting to see how the ants take care of the pupa. Messer is a species that doesn't use silk to protect their pupa, but instead just makes it do without it. So you can actually see them hardening their exoskeleton over time. Awesome. This dirt formicarium is probably the best decision I have ever made to add to any setup. It's so fun watching them dig and to see how they probably would have made their nest in the wild. Like how the tunnels look and so on. I really recommend every one of you to make at least one of these setups for one of your colonies. It's dope. If you're interested, go check out part 1, where I go over how I made this exact setup. That was otherwise it for me. Hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you guys in the next one, or on my Instagram, at ants underscore Scandinavia, if you follow me there. Well, see you around scavengers. Bye!